Please, my name is Silas Eji Jenfi. I work with Ghana Health Service in Ghana. And this topic is about maternal risk factors for low birth weight and macrostomia, which is a cross-sectional study in the northern region of Ghana. This was my master's thesis I, I had during my master's course in Japan. This research was done and supervised by Professor Aiga, uh, who is currently a lecturer in Japan, and also uh, by Professor Miho, also a lecturer in Japan at Kasaki University at the School of Tropical Medicine in Cuba. This will be my presentation outline from introduction, the two objectives, the methods, and then go through some discussion and finally come out with some conclusion. By word of introduction, birth weight is one of the observable and measurable outcome of pregnancy. Birth weight after birth is categorized into low birth weight, normal, and high birth weight. The low and high birth weight are usually called the abnormal birth weight. Low birth weight is birth weight which is less than 2,500 grams. Why high birth weight, also called macrosomia, is birth weight greater or equal to 4,000 grams? There are a lot of researches about birth weight and the developmental origin of health and diseases theory, also called the Duhal, came out that these abnormal birth weight are usually associated with neonatal mortality and some non-communicable diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, cancers in the adulthood. Moreover, there are a lot of evidences which are also coming out with association between maternal factors such as body mass index, antenatal versus parity infections, and these abnormal birth weight, both in Asia and Africa. Nonetheless, there are few studies that assesses those relationship between the maternal factors and abnormal birth weight in semi-rural areas in these areas despite some increasing prevalence uh, prevalence <coughs> with low birth weight and macrosomia. Moreover, most of these studies do not also assess macrosomia or high birth weight in these African and Asian countries. <laughs> so this study was aimed at identifying maternal risk factors for low, uh, for low birth weight and macrosomia in the Savulugu municipality in the northern region of Ghana. The specific objectives are one, to estimate the prevalence rates of low birth weight and macrosomia. Two, identify maternal risk factors for low birth weight. And lastly, identify the maternal risk factors for macrosomia. These are some of the pictures showing low birth weight. These are very small babies. And these are also macrosomic births or babies. Methods used in the study. The study, as I mentioned, was conducted in the Savulugu district or municipality in the northern region of Ghana. Ghana is found in the West Africa and it is bounded by Togo to the east, Cote d'Ivoire to the west, Burkina Faso to the north, and also to the south by Atlantic Ocean. So this is the small map here at the top left corner. You can see the map of Ghana and the larger face is where the study was conducted and the study was conducted using five public health facilities in the <laughs> municipality. <coughs> the study design was a retrospective cross-sectional one, and the study population were made up of nursing mothers who have delivered only one baby in the last mm -hmm. four weeks, and also seeking postnatal mm -hmm. care services at the five public health facilities. So a picture at the right here is showing a mother who was interviewed with the baby. <coughs> a sampling technique was a single stage and simple random sampling was also used. <laughs> the data collection methods was in the form of questionnaire where ODK, that is open data kit, 
uh, was used to collect data from February 1 to March 31st in the year 2022, that is this year. And it was collected through strategic interview where a data collector or the research assistant with um, a participant here. And also some of the data was collected from maternal and child health records, uh, antenatal and postnatal, as well as delivery registers. So this is a picture showing one of the uh, data collect collection methods. That is the maternal and child health record books. Ethical consideration was received from both Japan and also from Ghana Health Service and informed consent was signed and the various ethical considerations were also observed. The sample size was calculated using this formula and after considering 10 <laughs> Hello, Doc. Can you hear me? Bro, come here, come here. Pass me. Doc, can you hear me? I, I guess uh, due to internet, bad internet, uh, he's disconnected. So we are trying to connect him once. So just give me a few minutes. Doc, can you hear me now? Silence. Doctor Silas, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Sorry, I have some connection. Uh, could you be able to present now? Y yes, please. Can I yeah. share? Yeah, you can share your slides now. Sorry for that. That's fine. Please, can you see my slides? Yeah, I can see your slides. You can continue. Can I start from here or I should yeah. still go back? Yeah, you can start from here. Only hear your slides stop. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, as I mentioned, the study was conducted in the Savlugu in the northern region of Ghana, and this was the sample size. We finally chose 35 cities as the final sample size because it satisfied the sample size requirement for low birth weight and macrosomia. The study variables were made up of two independent dichotomous variables. The first one was low birth weight and the second was macrosomia. With regards to the independent variables, they were about 57. We had 18 sociodemographic and economic variables we had about 16 anthropometric and antenatal variables. 
and also about 15 obstetric and clinical variables that were used as the independent or exposure variables. In the analysis, univariant, bivariant, and uh, multivariant analysis were done. In the univariant analysis, discretive statistics was done and 28 dummy variables were created for variables with more than two categories. In the bivariant analysis, chi-square and Fisher's exit tests were used and also Wilkinson ransom tests. Multicollinearity was assessed, which led to the exclusion of second trimester anabia in the final model. And in the multivariant analysis, logistic regression was used to build two models to determine the predictors for low birth rate and macrosomia. Results. Some of the sociodemographic characteristics were the mean age of the mothers were about 27 years and that of the newborn was about two weeks. About 90% of the mothers were married and also 88% of the mothers were Muslims. One third of the mothers has no formal education and about 77 mothers were from the one major ethnic group called the Dagomba ethnic group in the municipality. About 56% of the newborns were males. In achieving the first objectives, the prevalence rate of low birth weight was 22.2%, showing the 95% confidence interval, and also the, the prevalence of low of macrosomia was about 8.7% with its confidence interval shown. Achieving objective two for maternal risk factors for low birth weight. This was the logistic regression model in the multivariant analysis. It was discovered that mothers belonging to other ethnic groups, which are usually the minor ethnic groups, were less likely to give birth to low birth weight. It was also known that mothers who gave birth to children with height greater than 47.5 centimeters and mothers who had eight or more ANC visits were also less likely to give birth to low birth weight children. However, mothers with anemia in the first trimester of pregnancy and also anemia in the third trimester of pregnancy were more likely to give birth to low birth weight new needs. Objective three was looking out for the maternal risk factors for macrosomia. And this was the logistic regression model. It was discovered that the socioeconomic status, which was represented as the wealth quintile of mothers, increase the risk of giving birth to macrosomic babies, as well as mothers with gestational age of equal or more than 42 weeks were more likely to also give birth to macrosomic babies. Discussion. The prevalence rate of low birth weight is higher than a report from Nigeria. And also the prevalence of macrosomia in this study was also lower than a report from Ethiopia, which was about 19.1%. Mothers from minor ethnic groups, that is the other ethnic groups, had lesser chance to deliver low birth weight children. This is not in agreement with a study in the Upper East region of Ghana and Ecuador. It was known that education and socioeconomic status of minor groups may have promoted appropriate nutrition practices during pregnancy, which tend to be healthy against low birth weight children. Moreover, children, mothers who had children with length greater than 47.5 centimeters was protective against low birth weight. This was not in line with a study in Brazil. It is known that Though mother's height has been reported as a genetic proxy for predicting newborn's length. However, 
appropriate maternal nutrition could promote greater child length to fetal programming and epigenetics. Again, antenatal care visits equal or more than eight reduce the risk of low birth weight children. In Uganda, ANC visits equal or more than four reduce low birth weight children. This study results also satisfy the 2016 WHO ANC model for positive pregnancy outcomes. More ANC visits is necessary to create opportunity for screening potential risk factors in pregnancy. Anemia in the first and third trimester of pregnancy also increases the risk for low birth weight. This is in line with studies from Ethiopia and China. Usually, anemia causes poor fetal growth due to in inadequate oxygen supply to the uterus and also to the fetus. It was also discovered that gestational age equal or greater than 42 weeks had higher odds for large birth weight children. This is very in line in a study in Cameroon. It is also known that advanced gestational age usually help in promoting continuous fetal growth in the uterus, which usually the normal gestational age of delivery is about 37 weeks and most of the children that stay in the uterus more than the 37 weeks usually has some increment in their weight around 100 to 120 grams, which has been proven in other studies. Maternal socioeconomic status was also associated with microsomic births, which contrasts with a study in the southern Ethiopia. However, more in-depth studies is needed to find out whether these effects has uh, the, the strength of this effect on macrosomic babies. Limitations of the study. There was a possible sampling bias as a result of mothers who are not having or who have misplaced their maternal and child health record books, mothers who delivered in the homes and mothers who have centered themselves from antenatal and postnatal services. There could be mismeasurement by non-standard methods because it's a retrospective study. The data were collected from maternal and child health record books, and some were also collected through structured interview, resulting in potential record bias from respondents. The season of which the data was collected, which was a dry season in Ghana, could also affect the results of the study because during this season, most of the mothers have uh, infections, such as respiratory infections, which would affect their nutrition and in, uh, definitely affect the outcome of the baby's weight. In conclusion, the prevalence rate of low birth weight and macrosomia were relatively high. Maternal anemia in the first and third trimesters of pregnancy increased the risk of low birth weight why mothers from minor ethnic groups in the municipality and also mothers who had antenatal visits equal or more than eight and mothers having children whose length were greater than 47.5 centimeters were protective factors for low birth weight newborns. Furthermore, advanced gestational age and maternal socioeconomic status increase the risk of macrosomic birth. Hence, this study recommends health policies, such as the recruitment and also training of more public health nutritionists to improve the nutrition counsel counseling in the health facilities and also in the district. Also to give community health education and also promotion of lifestyle improvement, coupled with the strengthening of health service delivery are very necessary to reduce the risk of low birth weight and macrosomia, which have future consequences uh, on adulthood and also uh, future consequences of developing non-communicable diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, cancers, among others in the adulthood. Thank you very much for listening and I'm very grateful for the presentation.
I want to use this opportunity to thank the organizers and all the participants for listening to my presentation. I'm ready for any questions. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.